It's warm enough now that I'm going to dump the oil out of it. What I'll do is I'll put my little jack underneath the back of it and I'll lift it up and I'll take the wheel off. That way it gives me access to the drain tube here. A little bit easier to make sure it doesn't go all over the place. Snow blowers are so rattly and noisy when they run. It's, uh, it's crazy. I just shut the mic off and <laughs> let it do its thing. All right. Hoist back up. Stand underneath. Let's get that oil changed. Moving on. I've got the shear pin, well, the bolts that were in there. I've got them out, so these freewheel now. They're a little stiff. I'm probably going to take them apart and clean all that off. But anyways, I'm going to split this unit because we got a growly noise going on back here that I don't like. Not sure if we can hear it. There is a, uh, a braking system that stops those augers. And that braking system should be disabled because I've got the, the belt off, the auger belt off, and the uh, lever squished down. So... The, the brake should be off the pulley, but anyways, we're going to split it. I'm going to take it apart here. I think I'm going to take these two bolts out of here first. And then I'll take the two side support bushings out and then the, the shaft and the trans, uh, the um, <clears throat> gearbox and all the augers and everything should be able to come out. So that's what I'm going to do. That's the plan. <clears throat> A couple of uh, bolts over here. They should fall. There we go. A couple of bolts on this side. A little bit loose now. I gotta get in there and get those 716s off of there. I'm gonna get in with an air ratchet. Just because it's faster. And I have one. fast. One bolt out. Standard bolt. Meaning it's not a shear bolt. I'm not sure if this is supposed to have shear bolts or not. I did work on one machine that had shear bolts back here too. I'll check a, uh, I'll check a parts list. See if it's supposed to be shear bolts. If it is, I'll just put shear bolts in it. So hopefully this shaft is not stuck in the impeller. Oh, it doesn't look like it. That's just, this whole unit should slide right out now. Should. Oh no, because the pulley is still attached on the other end. So it's, it's that won't come out until we get the everything tilted forward. Dang it. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Got to reposition the machine, get a support under the handles now, and tilt it. So let's get this stuff out of the way. So back you out a little. Need to get a support under the back handle here because I got to pull a bolt, one bolt here and one bolt matching on the other side. And then this unit should split open like this. But let's get the chute off of there because it's connected with cables. Should be able to just take one bolt out of that, or one nut, and lift that chute right off. Uh, yeah, 9 sixteenths it is. So that's the bracket that holds the cable assembly. That just flops out of the way, and this should come off. There we go. Out of the way. Just throw it on the floor for now. <laughs> Now that's our auger belt. Let's have a look-see down in there. You guys can't see it, but I can look in there. Something's awful growly back here. Could be something stuck in behind the impeller, between the impeller and the housing. It must be, because only the impeller is turning. The shaft isn't. There's got to be something stuck in behind the impeller. 
it's just everything is so tight you can't see anything. Oh. I see something. Actually, it looks like a bolt. A bolt came loose. Ah, dang it. We got to split it. Yeah, there it is. Wow. Can't say I've seen that. <laughs> You're going to see it because we got to split it now. But what it is is the back, the back of the shaft, um, the impeller goes, the shaft goes through the impeller, then it goes through the housing, and it goes into a bearing. So that bearing is on a uh, diamond-shaped plate with a bearing in the middle, and there's two holes in these sides for the bolts to go through. So the bolts go through from this side, and there's nuts on the back to hold them on. This one has no nuts, and the bearing is actually not in its position. So the bolts are kind of hanging there, and they're dropped down. But uh, I've never seen it before. Crazy. But it's definitely got to be split. we got to pull a pulley off and get that bearing situated and uh, go from there. Sometimes there's stones getting behind there, but not in this case. <laughs> this case, it's a bigger problem than that. There's one of those bolts out. I don't want to take the other one out because it'll just flop. So, I got something, what am I going to put under there? I know, I got to stand outside. Got my work made underneath there now. Hopefully that's enough to do what we need it to do. I'm just going to go to the other side and pop that other bolt out. Carefully, got to hang on to stuff. There we go, everything just shifted. So that's going backwards, that's going forwards. There's our belt, the auger belt. Make sure it's not hooked around anything. The bottom should just be kind of hooked in there. Maybe it's maybe it actually has to tilt back a little further to unhook. You're gonna stay. Nope, you're gonna fall. We'll try that. Far enough. There's our auger belt. The hooks are unhooked now. Now well, they're close to being unhooked. There we go. Lower housing is disconnected. Auger belt. And because everything is so tight in between the auger pulley and the this drive pulley, you have to do this just to change this belt because it will not fit out between them. Yeah. Fun. Uh-huh. Well, that definitely explains the crunchy. This belly pan's full of stuff. We'll get to that. Okay, let me see what I got to do here because I can't work on everything on the bench at the same time, so... Might just move the engine assembly backwards a little. Go a little further. Yeah, that should hold. If it doesn't, it's going that way, so I'm I'm okay with that. There's a brake shoe here I was telling you about. Probably can't see it, but it's right there. It's a brake shoe that sits on that pulley. Let's turn this around. Get a block or something for under there. See that? That ain't right. Get a half inch socket. Uh, it's not tight. Somebody's definitely been in here. <laughs> that bearing is nowhere near where it's supposed to be. <laughs> Have a look-see at that. That ain't right. This bolt is actually pushed in and rubbing on the back of the impeller. 
so is this one. Not sure if I'm going to actually be able to move that. Uh, oh, there you go. There's our bearing housing, which is still okay. The bearing is not actually bad. What kind of bearing is that? Six, two, zero, three. I would change it if it needed it, but it don't need it. These are just spinning. I think we have to get the impeller off, which means we'll have to pull this bearing. Just hoping it'll come free easily. Does not look like it. Let's get some penetrating oil on it. Snowboards get uh, uniquely rusty. Where a lawnmower doesn't always get rusty, but snow blowers do because they, once you blow the end of your driveway out, out where the snow plow has been, there's all kinds of salt out there. I wonder if I could work that out. I do have bearing pullers that I might have to use here. Because I can't hold these bolts to get the everything back on and tight. Okay, bearing puller. A lot of work on this one. A lot of more in-depth work that we don't normally do, actually. Not every video can be a quick clean the carburetor and make it happen. Or not every one can be like that. So let me get my clamp in behind there, if it'll do it. Perhaps. Come on. There's another style of puller that's just got two out, outside edges that go around here and pull. Doesn't matter what you're trying to do with it, usually it's set up incorrectly for the application. So, And this one's not going to do it. Feel it. Can't really get in behind it. Huh. Well, it's got penetrating oil on it. I'm going to see if I can just gently tap this, the shaft, out and leave the bearing sitting where it is. Let's see what happens. Rubber mallet. As to not harm the end of this. I suppose I can put the bolt in it. Standard coarse thread 5 16 bolt. It's probably going to be too long to fit all the way in. Yes, it is. But we're going to try it. We're going to whack it. moving slow but it's moving it's moving more penetrating oil in there spray everything oh my god you guys didn't see any of that stuff So it took all kinds of footage of me getting this all apart without realizing that the camera was zoomed into a spot about two square inches and you didn't see diddly. Anyways, <laughs> we got it apart. It was an adventure. And this is what I was telling you about. That This is the impeller that's, uh, this is what throws the snow into the chute. This mark right here is where the bolts for that bearing we're rubbing. It was a mess. And you guys didn't see any of it. Okay, gearbox feels good. I'm just, it's not on camera. You guys can't see it. I'm on the other side of the machine, but the gearbox feels okay. There's no leakage, so it's still full. What a disaster. I had to use my air hammer to get this thing out. We're going to clean all the rust off the shafts so I can get the new, uh, 
get the bearing back on. If I have a 6203, I'll put one in it, but 6203, not terrible. It's a little noisy, but it's not horrible. I might actually have those bearings. 6204 is an early stock. That's deck bearings for most <coughs> MTD mowers. Huh. Uh huh. What say you? Well, son of a six two zero three. Hmm. Jettison New bearing. Okay, I'm just gonna clean the rusty uh, drive shaft up. Just a little sandpaper, clean it, a little, little uh, anti-seize on it, and then we'll get it all set back in. We'll get this bearing plate back over here with the bolts tight the way they should be. I believe that I am going to put nylock nuts on it so they don't fall off again. <laughs> and carry on. You can see there's a little oblong, well you may not be able to see it, but there's a little oblong wear here in the housing because of where the shaft was when the bearing housing was sitting above the bolts, inconsequential. Once we put the bearing and the support plate and everything in there, the bolts and everything will hold it into alignment where it needs to be. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to clean up the drive shaft, the prop shaft that goes through everything. We'll get it set back in there and uh, basically hang it back together. Okay, after a lot of fidgeting and messing around, we got it back together anyways. I could not replace that bearing because the bearing that I had, the inner bore was a little too small. It wasn't going to fit. So I ended up just greasing the old one and putting it back in. It's still a little growly, but it, it's fine. There's no rust or anything in it. It was just a little dry. So anyways, we've got that pillow block bearing now secured. It was, it's like a chess game. You got to put things together in a certain order or else you'll either not be able to tighten the bolt or you won't be able to get the impeller in or... So it's got to be like a kind of a pre-assembly, kind of wiggle it in and get it half kind of aligned with blocks of wood. And then basically I was just pulling on the impeller shaft with my hand and tapping the pillow block bearing under the pulley, tapping that in to get the shaft to come through that bearing. So, and then I got the nut on there nice and tight. So the impeller spinning, actually got a lot of air coming out of it right now. Impeller spinning, that's okay. The augers are turning. I've already replaced the shear pins. I actually put real shear pins in it instead of bolts. <sighs> I just got to put it back together. <laughs> That's easy. It'll hook in here. Just spin around. It'll hook on that bottom shaft there. And then we we'll just tip it up. Put bolt here and bolt there. Make sure they're tight. Otherwise, the thing starts to go all over the place. And that's fine. We're not going to change the belt because it's like brand new. I'm not going to bother. If it was a little bit old and cracked, I would put a new one in it just so I don't have to do it next year uh, for the customer. This is a resale machine, so hopefully I'll see it back for service once every year or two for tune-up tune -up oil change and stuff like that. But uh, anyways, I got to clear some of the specialty tools that I use to do this disaster. And we can get everything organized back on the bench again. And we can get the two halves back together. All right, so I'm a little better organized now with that mess taken care of. So I've just kind of shimmied the front and the back together. And uh, I've got the belt in there. You gotta make sure you get that in there first or else you're not getting it in after. And now we just basically gotta kind of tip them together so they we can get these bolts in two bolts on the top. Oh, there's one that just, just about lined up. Started by hand. I'll run it down a little bit with a gun. Oops. Didn't want to bottom it out, but there you go. It's run down. Just got to make sure our other side is still playing nice, which it is. There we go. They're kind of together, so we'll get the brakes out from underneath the engine side. That way you can sit where, where it's happy. Stay. Lift these up. Give her a good hammer down. 
so they don't slide. I'm going to rip my camera off the bench in a second because my cord... Done. That's done. Get you guys zoomed in a little bit on the belt there. Whoa. Well, of course, it shoots in the way. Of course. Of course. And now we just got to tuck the belt back under. Well, that should be much, much gooder. I mean, better. I mean, yeah, that'll work. Let's get that clamp off of the handle. Just give the engine a little, little bit of a rotate, maybe. Help us get that belt on there. There we go. She's good and on. Just got to reach in there and tighten those two bolts that I thought may be shear pins. You can just see them. These two bolts here, just got to tighten those up. On, on one of the machines I worked on, that was a... They were actually shear bolts. On this one, they're just regular bolts. Quarter inch bolts. 7 16 socket and wrench. I'm just gonna reach in there and just run these down. They're not overly long, so. Bing, bing. Snug that one up. So you can see our new shear. No, you can't. Whoop. You can see our new shear pin there. There's one there, one on this side. While I had it apart and all the augers and everything out, I cleaned the stub shafts from the gearbox. They're only four inches long or so, four and a half. They only go partially into the tube. So I cleaned them and greased them, both sides. And this doesn't have bearings in the, in the ends of the auger bar. It's just basically a bushing. It's a plastic bushing here. And it just rides on the outside of this pipe. So I just cleaned all the rust off, put some grease in there. So that's nice. All well, the handle is up, but uh, yeah, it's, if I take the slack, put the slack in the belt, that actually rotates nice and free. Beautiful. No screeching, growling noise. So, Front end is done. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Where to next? Oh, still got to flip it up onto its nose. We'll lower the, lower the lift table, flip it up on its nose, and I'll take the belly pan off and get the drive system all lubed and cleaned. Put the belt cover back on it. Put the chute back on it. We can do that right now. That's easy enough. Here's the chute. Set that into place. Uh oh, I don't remember where that was. The cables are only so long, so I think it was just kind of off center to the right a little. That's where we'll set it, anyways. That's what we're going with. Check it right now. Yep, the control handle is just, just off to the right, so that's where it was. Put this nylock nut run down. Give it a quick test. Nice. That works. We're still waiting on a spring for that impeller uh, linkage at the back there. I've ordered one and it's not in yet. So we just need to replace that mechanics wire with uh, the proper spring that gives it the right tension for the belt for the impeller. We can do the drive. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this or not. Good Lord, don't fall off. Is it too high? Well, let's wait till it's on the ground. <laughs> Hang on. All right, so we got it situated on the bench here where we can get to the stuffs. Maybe. Of course, this one's got bolts down the side. Or most don't. I, don't think, I think the husk burners do. Pull these wheels off, we can get to those side bolts rather easy. 
while I had things apart, I did clean these up and put anti seize on the shafts, so <clears throat> we'll be able to get them on and off for servicing later. One more bolt here. One more bolt here. Get some nice carpet under pad, some underlay. <laughs> that ain't supposed to be there. Leaves and mouse nest. Belly pan's not rotted out. That's a bonus. A lot of time they are completely rotted. So the drive system I was telling you about that we're going to lubricate is this hexagonal shaft up here. This friction pulley moves back and forth across there. That's what gives you your gears and your speeds. Get the acorns out of there. Well, it's rather simple. You just all I do is I get a rag, spray some penetrating oil on the rag, wipe the old grease down, wipe it off, and then put uh, some new lithium grease on it. It makes it operate much smoother. Let's get that shifter all the way to one side. Let's go all the way that way first. I'm just cleaning the old thick grease off of there, just so it's not quite so stiff to operate. Outside's good. All the way the other way. Get that grease off of there. These are nice, there's no chain in them, it's just gear on gear. It's much better than the old chain style. Some of the, some of the lesser ones are still chain. But this is a this is a better built machine. It's not a, it's not a bottom feeder. It's a better built one. All right, grab some lithium grease, white lithium grease, and just want a tiny little bit on there. Not too much. You don't want it flinging everywhere. You don't want it on the rubber pulley. You don't want it on this friction disc. Just a little bit. Just smear it all over there. So we've got the one side coated. We'll move the gear selector over to the other, back to the other side. And it's just a little bit more to go on this side. Back and forth. Make sure it's coated. Keeps rust off. There we go. That's it. That's it for that. Put, put this grease away and grab the oil can will just put a couple of drops on oil drops of oil on all the moving parts is a little bit of oil on these gears not too much just a couple of drops it's really all you need if you get too much in there then it goes everywhere should do that drop oil on this bushing just a drop just a drop here on this where the axle goes through it's also a bushing. Drop here on this. Anything that moves. Actually, we'll get up in here too. It's metal and it's outside in the winter. It cannot hurt to put a little bit of lubricant on everything that moves. That's that. Button up the belly pan. Wait for a spring to replace this wire and just adjust the length of that rod. This unit's done. And with that being said, I'm just gonna close out this video here because all that's left is a couple of bolts and a spring. So, uh, yeah, it was a donation to, uh, to the Random Wrenching Fleet. Uh, thanks again to my buddy CB who donated it to me. And uh, I'm sure this is going to be a great machine. It runs really good. Uh, it's a big machine, 10 horse. So it'll uh, move a lot of snow. Out here where we are, we're pretty rural out here. And we get a lot of snow, big drifts and stuff. So anyways, guys, I'm sure I got something else to do today. So thanks again for joining me. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. And uh, subscribe if you wish. If you do, subscribe give that bell a, a click as well. It'll notify you when I upload new videos. And until the next one, take care.